chapter 1, verse 24. Therefore, saith the Lord, the Lord of hosts, the mighty one of Israel, Ah, I will eat me of my adversary, and avenge me of my enemy. Now, while you've got your Bibles open, and you've got a pencil, and don't mind marking your Bible, I want you to mark this one, and promise me you'll memorize it. You will. Go to the book of Micah, chapter 7, and verse 8. If you ever, please memorize this scripture. Or at least be able to get to it real quick. We've almost passed the day of memorizing scriptures, but I wish we had. I've seen the time I needed one real quick and handy. You have had to look it up, it would have been disaster. Micah, six, uh, Micah 7, pardon me, and verse 8. Rejoice not against me, O mine enemy. When I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be a light unto me. Yes. Let's say it again, wouldn't we? Rejoice not against me. O my enemy, when I fall, I shall arise. When I sit in darkness, the Lord shall be Thank you. Now, what I'm going to talk about a little while tonight may sound a little bit preliminary, elementary, but in the day we're living in, darkness that is covering us, I don't know if you've noticed it. Now, I hope you haven't. I hope it hasn't come to you. But you might as well get ready as the enemy tries to blast the fact that there's going to be more spirits to war against you than you've ever had in your life. I do not want to scare you or portray a black picture, but I must be honest. He said gross darkness would cover the people. Darkness will prevail. Now, I've seen it in my little short day. I remember when praying through this morning, a good Holy Ghost prayer meeting would last, you seem like, for a week. You can pray this morning, and by noon, you don't even feel like you prayed sometimes. Now, I'm just speaking by experience with my church and my own personal experience. Maybe you've never reached that place, and I hope you never. But I'm sorry to tell you that it's very possible you will. And when it comes, I want you to be ready for it. All right. We do not have to succumb to gloom and defeat. We don't have to go around all the time. Just down and out, we can still live victorious, even in this closing hour. Can I tell you this? The Bible says that the devil is like a roaring lion, going about seeking whom he may devour. And I am told, I have no way to prove this or disprove it, but it sounds good, and I, I was told that it was actually a fact that when a lion roars, it is when he has missed his prey. You will keep that in mind. It might also help you. Uh, he is silent as he creeps up on his prey. He's not roaring to go catch his lamb. He silently creeps up on it, but if he misses it, it makes him mad. Can I tell you that he's missed his prey several times? Number one in Calvary, he missed it. And he's been roaring ever since. And when you came in, he missed it again. Somebody said, well, I came in the church and had more trouble than I've ever had in my life. Well, that stands to reason. He's roaring now. He's a roaring lion. He missed his prey. So, uh, yeah, but that sounds bad. It looks gloomy. No, it means he missed. 
All right. That ought to encourage you. Yeah. That doesn't mean he won't be back. And I would say that my visit would be successful if I could put something in you tonight that will help you, not tonight. I could say a lot of things with this shouting that I learned several years ago that those things that you use just to excite for the moment. I heard preachers preach that sounds so good that I thought, my God, where are they getting all of that? That sounds so good. And the next day, I couldn't remember a word they said. And it was just so pretty till I just couldn't remember. But I made up my mind, if I sound a little bit slow and awkward or whatever is wrong with it, if I could say something, it'll help you next week. That's what I want. My prayer today is, God, please let me say something strengthening for this people. Because the ultimate goal of all of us is to step inside the gate. I want to make the city. I've got to make the city. But between here and there is a race, a warfare, a battle. You've got a personal enemy. He's personal. He will attack you personally. He deals with your own personality. He knows your personality. And can I say he knows the joy in your heart? Don't care how well equipped you are with the breastplate of righteousness and all of these other good things. But every hornet has got a joint in it. And every human being has his certain weakness. All right. Mine may be one thing and yours another, but the devil knows the joint of your hornet. He knows it. He can catch you off guard. He'll get him an arrow or a sword or a spear through that joint in your hornet. But we're going to be wiser than that. We're going to learn his devices. Praise God. There is a difference. The Bible talks about putting on the whole armor of God that you might be able to withstand the fiery darts of the wicked one. Fiery darts of the wicked one. And uh, we need to understand that. The fiery darts of the wicked one. Praise the Lord. There is a test before all of us. And there's things that we can handle pretty well, but those fiery darts, we better watch them. They can easily find a joint in your heart. And I just want to put a little courage in you tonight. And you may not feel like you need any. It's hard to feed people. It's already full. But if you don't put a, if you just, if this, oh well, oh yeah. Surely you've got a little side bag there. You can put something in and. The little survival kit you might need down the road. Oh, amen. If I can just work you up a few, I remember the boys used to come out to buy our community on maneuver. Boys, boys preparing for service. And I had the time of my life. They, they were only allowed, only allowed one canteen of water a day. And they'd catch the sergeant zone and they'd say, son, if you'll bring me some of that well water, We'll give you all of the candy in our survival kit. And boy, I collected candy and all those kind of goodies. Got to, got to play with their machine guns and all of that. And of course, when the sergeant would hear his jeep coming over the hill, well, they'd jump our fence and head for their foxhole. But I learned something about a survival kit. They've got one package in there, a little old powder that's equivalent to a dozen an egg. And they've got a pill in there equivalent to a T-bone steak. And uh, it's a little compact. It may not always taste as good, but it'll keep you. Yes. All right. Amen. And God's got his survival kit. Yes. Amen. And that nobleman went away. He issued to each one of his servants a pound. That don't sound like much. A pound of cotton is not much cotton. But a pound of TNT would at least knock a corner out of this building. And when you uh, consider that when our nobleman left, he issued us a pound, each one of us a survival kit. All right. And I don't believe it's running out. I don't believe it's weakened in its strength. And I don't believe he left us in an area, each survival kit, 
were usually packed to fit an area. Desert, forest, watery areas, whatever. That survival kit had in it what was necessary for that particular area. And our captain did not leave us without sufficient supply. The church is not going down. It's not developed a serious case of anemia. And we're not about to die with leukemia. Uh, we still got some real good red carpet left in the earth. And I'd like to tell you that tonight because the devil will tell you something else. Now notice what I read to you in the book of Isaiah. God is saying, Ah! God is laughing. Now look up that word ah. It also is interchangeable with the word aha. And the meaning of that, I looked it up myself, and it is malicious humor. <laughs> Some of what Brother Burr and Brother Featherstone had once in a while. I've enjoyed their malicious humor. They gouged one another. But I'll say this. Brother Featherstone has done a wonderful job to be such a little fella here against such a tall man. He's almost got Brother Bird to just forget that. <laughs> no, I mean, I'd be afraid to leave him up there much longer because he's done convincing his English. And he's done him admitting they're good warriors. And, uh, well, no, not the Brother Bird will be affected the rest of his life, but anyhow. We've got some concessions on it. But I'm saying that the Almighty God has a little sense of humor, especially in dealing with his enemies. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. 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 His opponent, he likes to kind of see you. All right. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. I like this. I'm going to tell you a little war story. may not mean much to you, but it does for us Texans. During the Korean conflict, oh, no, pardon me, Vietnam, during that conflict, we uh, story came out that uh, just a little handful, I think it was about six or eight men left on a hill in Vietnam, totally surrounded. Everywhere they looked beneath them, was Viet Cong army. I mean guns and tanks and a whole world. And these poor fellows had been peeled off and left on the top of the hill surrounded. Well, everything had been peeled down, all the officers, lieutenants, and what have you, and that were crammed down to a sergeant from Texas. Now, I didn't write this. <laughs> that sergeant got those other five men out there and said, Boy, we're surrounded. And uh, they had big uh, horn speakers at the foot of that hill blasting up there. Right off to surrender, we're coming up after you. There's no hope. Death is sure. And they just kept that going day and night. Well, the old sergeant told his five men, said, the buddy, it looks like it's over. But let's die like crazy. Yes, sir. I tell you what we're going to do. We're going to get out here and we're going to laugh. And I want you to laugh. But I want you to laugh. And I want you to laugh. <laughs> I'm giving you an order. Yes. I want you to hoop and laugh. I want you to roll on the ground and laugh. <laughs> and so they uh, all got out there to where they could be seen real well, and they just. Ah! <laughs> Woo! <laughs> And they rolled, and they hollered, 
and they laughed, and they laughed, and they laughed. And they're out of breath, and but they still laugh. <laughs> it actually got funny. It wasn't funny first. <laughs> After this had gone on for quite a while, they, uh, one of them stopped to look and there was moon. And uh, this is in the files of history, the facts of history. And uh, before it was over with, they got to laughing. There was nobody to be seen at the foot of the hill. Later on, one of the Viet Congs was captured who was stationed there at that particular time, and he told the story. He said, we knew we had them, or at least we thought we did. Yeah. Yeah. But said that silly bunch got to laugh. <laughs> and said so they laughed, and they mocked us, and they laughed at us. So we decided there's several things that have to be. Either there was more men up there than what showed to be. Or there was supplies coming that we didn't know about. All right. And we decided that there was more to it and we better not tackle it, we better leave. All right. <laughs> but saith the Lord God, yeah. ah, I will rid thee of mine enemies. How are you going to do it, God? And there was an additional 
fruit bed it in. Are you listening? Yeah. And groom and fatten it. The difference between us and that Texas sergeant is we do have some more. Yeah. And there are some supplies over me. He will be here.
In the same pool is another preacher that the pastor's about 400 in Sunday school, and they just pulled the girl out that they shoved in, and you could see her underclothes. Right here with plenty of lighting, and here they are swimming in the presence of a mixed crowd. And he said, I don't understand this. He said, there's their result. And this young man wasn't quite having that kind of result. And he was taking the very foundation under him. Oh, I sat down and I cried and I cried and I cried for days. I'd go to eat and I'd cry to think that the labors of 60, 70 years is going down the drain. And the preservation of this thing is left in the hands of so few. And it really depends on us tonight. We haven't made it yet. The sacrifice is still on the altar. And the blockers are here to take it. All right. If the devil could move into your churches and settle over it with gloom and despair or into your life individually. You weary a pastor by taking you off one at a time. Right. I mean, that will drive a preacher crazy. Right. It'll make him wonder if he's preaching it too hard or what's the matter. But let me tell you something, saints. You can help win this fight. Yeah. Well, Abram said, I'm not giving up. I'm fighting buzzers. Hallelujah. And he rolled the birds off. And after he got them rolled off, the devil said, I'm not through with you, sir. And he let a heart of darkness settle down over him, and a deep sleep come over him. It's paralyzed. The kind that makes you feel like your arms weigh 500 pounds. To pray, I've actually got down to pray lately, and my jaw locked. I honestly felt like there was something wrong with my jaw. The spirit pressed me. You know what you better learn to do? I think what most folks are doing, getting up and going on doing what they want to do, it's too hard. But you better learn to be a prayer warrior and pray till you pray. Yeah. If we don't learn to stay till something breaks, we will become a victim and a byword. I don't care if you believe in Jesus. I don't care if you believe in holy. Right. I don't care if you believe in the right kind of church government. Take prayer and pray through out of this thing and see what happens to it. All right. We're going to have to learn to break through some darkness. Oh, God. Yeah. It's here tonight. Yeah. All right. It's settled in this audience tonight. Yeah. Even after we shout it right now, the darkness of this world is coming in to cool in on us. The last night of this meeting is hard. It's not because you're tired. The devil will have you believe that. And this is not Christian science either. I believe when you're sick, you're sick. Right. Have you heard about that lady who was Christian science and good sick? And dying. Somebody asked her little child, how, how's mom doing? She said, she thinks she's dead. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not Christian science. I believe that, that you can be tired. But have you ever come to church tired and got in the spirit? Yeah. Yeah. Do that real often. Yeah. Get into the service if you feel like you're nearly dead. I've gone to church so sick I couldn't hardly really stand up. Hell to the Bible stand to keep from falling. But after a while, the spirit started yeah. going. Yeah.
you had a gathering, you go back to your little home church, that man is back 25 or 30, and boy, it seemed like the victory went out the window. <laughs> Next Wednesday night, we're done. Well, if you understood, for that little handle, if you'd make up your mind, you could make it a happen. All right. I've seen hands hold it look so small. By the time they all got to the town, they were working up room. Right. You can enlarge the building. I mean, you can enlarge the, the population of this thing just a little bit. Yeah. I'm talking about by getting in the city. All right. And it's one cycle. Yes, yes. It's not just one service. Let's let it get by. You let it know? No. no. Not in the day we live in the end. No. One service without touching God is all it takes for you to back to all right. It doesn't mean that's making it too close. No, it's not. I don't know what I'm talking about. I've got some old saints in history tonight that were my standby. And I was in the bank before I left here the day I left here. I was in the bank. And then she walked with her flesh on. I mean that woman. But you know what she did? That was a praying and singing. That girl knew how to witness. She's kept more people in my church than any other one woman in the church by going and visiting and encouraging and strengthening. But all of a sudden, she started just sitting in the services and wouldn't work. All right. That's it. That's it. And honestly, the chances of that girl ever coming back is so bad. And I mean, one time she was the prayer warrior of the church, but she started letting those one services go by. And then that other service went by. All right. And she didn't fight her way through the darkness for that other prayer meeting. And she said, I'll pray through next time. And the next time. And the devil just, and that's how he likes it. And he settles down and said, I'm going to squeeze the life out of this one because they haven't got it in them to pray on through. They haven't got it in them to persist. They haven't got it in them to stay there till. I know them. I know exactly. I can get them pressured a little bit. They'll get up and go on and do what they need to do. The work of the house. Wash the dishes. Go go in the garage and work or somewhere. I know what to do. I'll squeeze them a little bit. God help us, folks. All right. They're surrounded tonight. Yes, sir. If you're hiding your head in the sand, you better get it out of the sand. Right. You're surrounded. I mean, the powers of darkness has got us at bay. Yes. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Hallelujah. I don't know what you came to do. But I came to break through the <laughs>
you going to do about it? There's just six of us up here and the enemy all around. Uh, uh, I remember, let me tell you this to you, and your health. I was sick. I don't know what happened, but I was getting the gas or something. 20, 26 weeks. I was confined in my house. And the nerves, all that goes with them. I've often said no one should be allowed around a person having nerve problems that they've never had. But we don't want to. My good friends would never send me into orbit because they didn't know what to do. You don't sympathize with a person with nerves, but you don't kill them either. No. And I was fighting, and I never will forget it. The devil sent a man over to the house. I couldn't stand it. I've been, been pounded on it. People in this scared me in every step. When my guy was in front of my house, I'd run to my bed. I couldn't stand it. I'm talking about dear friends. My mother scared me. I was warring. I was battling. The devil sent an old boy over. I mean, he was filled with the devil, and he came in, rebuking me, chewing me out, talking to me about my mother and all. He was just a devil. And he wouldn't leave. And by the time he did go, I was in some kind of shape. I mean, I was fighting for my life. And I didn't feel like clean. I felt like doing anything to clean. There wasn't no song, no words around this boy. I didn't feel like singing, oh, how I love Jesus. I didn't feel like, you know what I felt like, was Just taking on running, hiding. I, I don't know what to call But I knew I couldn't do none of that. I wasn't running. I didn't put the brothers on the piano. I don't think we did singing. You don't have to. The book that preached to you has got some strong faith. Let me tell you something. If you've ever had a problem with nerves, if you ever had a problem with nerves, let me tell you. The devil tormented me because I'd open my Bible and read the book of Revelation. You know, it was got nerves. And you start reading about them scary animals over there. And it would take you up. And I honestly, I feel guilty because I couldn't. I said, you start a thing, can't read the whole Bible. There's something bad wrong with you that you can't read all the Bible. But it looks like every time I open it, it was talking about the judgment. Yeah. And one day I run up on that scripture that said, speak to yourself in Psalms. I said, well, I found out Psalms was true. There's nothing wrong about it. Pick you out a scripture that helps you. No. Well, I just started reading the song. When I couldn't pray, I'd read David's prayer. Mm -hmm. I got to read over there where he said one time, said, I will make up thy bed in my place. I said, well, I had a lot of folks make my bed, and I was no God. He'll put up your bed. He'll change the sheets for me. The real translation of that means he will turn the time of sickness into a time of death. Oh. And I got to read over there one day and I found another one. Boy, it was good, it was soothing, it was so sweet. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high will abide in the shadow of the Almighty. For I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge, my fortress, my God in Him. Lord, surely He'll deliver me from the snare of the power. And from the noise of pestilence to cover me with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust me. Ah. Uh, you ever seen an old hymn with Biddy? Anybody ever seen that? That's really something to behold. It starts raining, the sun is a little bit. When Biddy's make a dive for Mama, and she swells out of that twice her normal size, and they all crowd up on her. I've been sitting on the porch watching them change, and they 
was to head out to see how things were going and just feel up back under the head. <laughs> 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 Well, I was fighting, so I went to the piano, and I don't know of a better one. I really don't know. So I shot the top, and the good old spiritual hymn, yes, and going to say, aha! I wanted to say both exact words, but use the spirit of malicious humor. And say, buddy, you're not doing it. Oh, 
need to learn to be half a job. Don't stay home and get in the booth and the booth and all that. All right, that's it. And believe me, while you're here and even after you're here, you're in hell after what you eat.